Successful attacks bring enemies to near death more rapidly. You suffer significantly reduced damage from falls and make no noise when you land. Your movement also makes significantly less noise. Throwing knives stun enemies for a short time. You automatically recover throwing knives when performing multi-kills. Stealth stat increases by an additional 7. You are less likely to be detected and your assassinations will make less noise. To shoot an enemy gun mid-combo, the gun will reload automatically. Collisions inflict less damage and don't slow you down as much while driving. Reduces all range damage suffered. Throwing knives. Let's do this one. Since I tend to try and do multi finishes a lot. Okay, stronghold. Where's this chest? Oh, it's down. One second. What do you got? Might as well do City of London. And now I'm broke again. I hope everything was to your satisfaction. Okay, stronghold. Big guy. No, I didn't. I just threw him off the whole carriage. I'm doing this for a trophy. I didn't cause those deaths, the police did. What is Someone killed the Oh, hey. Look at all this wanton destruction. Let's go do the stronghold. It won't be in a bit. Ooh. Keep your eyes peeled for trouble. Hey, you might need this. Thanks, little rook. I don't know. Lookouts call reinforcements and burn blighter heist plants. Put 
this is level five. Two down. Where are the heist plans? Yep. Where are the heist plans? Oh, there they are. That table over there. There's the train. No, I just don't have, I just can't let them call reinforcements. Well, I didn't have enough time to react. Jacob, Jacob. No, Jacob. I'm sorry. Get up, get up. You don't see me. I gotta kill everyone in this area. Quietly slip away. Yeah, I just got two left now. Right, I still got the plans. Nope, they're in here. As long as I keep leave that guy alive. Done. This is why you don't leave your plans out in the open. Yeah, they were. They were just sitting on a table. Hello. 
during the plans, this lady walks up. She's like, "Wow, that's daily you got here, huh?" She just comes out of nowhere. Huh? Oh, hi, assassin. Wait, what? Someone take care of him! Get stuck here. Come on up! Okay, I won't pull any punches. There we go. Get something else. More health. There we go. Let's wreak havoc, shall we? Yes, Gov. Good thing she happened to just drop right in front of me. was a thief. Hey, little rock. This is no good. Must escape. Yeah. Well, we are a street gang. Gonna go around and recruit some people. What do you know me to the There you go. Thank you. Cheers. I can recruit up to five people, I believe. Good stuff. Eh, I can get that later. Leave me alone, police. Hey, Rooks, where are you? Some rooks. Where 
right over here. Friends at my back. I have cleared five rooks. Yes. But now I can sick them on people. Oh, there's no one around here. Oh yeah, this is my territory. Maybe you'll settle down when I've ripped your guts out. Look, yeah. you just run along. You won't get your cuffs on me. He's just got his chest. Oh, please be right there. <laughs> Insufferable fellow, I have ever had the misfortune to count among my acquaintances. Mr. Dickens was right. Foul weather wouldn't know where to have you. Foul weather? Bah! I have always been convinced that existing influences were responsible for the ordained birth of species. Let me remind you, sir, that you have accused me of abusing science, yet you are making my very ears bleed. You wound me, sir. Will you, Mr. Owen, for once in your miserable life, tell the truth and admit your guilt in this matter? Do you mind if I cut in, boys? You mean you don't want to listen to I have told you before, sir, I had nothing to do with that anonymous article. Nothing, I say. That is a lie, sir. And you know it. Bah, I don't have time for this nonsense. Nonsense? It is my name and reputation you have willfully besmirched, sir. My very name. Bah! <laughs> Drive, damn you, drive! That is Richard Owen! A vile, despicable wretch of a man! Really? I could have sworn you were close friends. Mr. Owen works at the asylum. He will know who made the syrup. Get him! Get him! Basically, yeah. Trophy! Trophy. Ah! Dang! Oh. What just happened? Jumped off. Yeah. Yeah. Any optionals? Nope. Okay. My guy, sorry. What about Starek's soothing syrup? Soothing syrup? Why would a scientist have any interest in I read your life, Mr. Owen, that you know something. Stop. I'm telling you, I do not know a thing. I swear, nor have I at all, nor have I ever been involved with anyone telling that patent medicine. There may be some truth to that. But you get stop the river tents. Better speak now, old man. Stop! For pity sake, stop and I will tell you everything I know. Dr. Elliotson, Dr. John Elliotson, he formulated the elixir. He's the man you want, not me. I beg you, good sir, stop this madness. Now, was that so hard? 
Yes. Was that so hard? Yes. Well, that was quick. Have a good day, sir. I might want to get a new carriage. John Elliott's son, born 29th of October, 1791. The son of a chemist and apothecary, John Elliott's son attended Jesus College at Cambridge, which might explain his panache as a prophet. Unfortunately, he chose mes mesmerism to preach. Forget the Virgin Mary, he cavorted around with mesmerized twin sisters who he believed could see diseases inside others. They sound fun. Suffice it to say, he was not long he was not long for respected medicine, which, might I add, at that time, thought leeches were surgical instruments. One had to really try hard to be outside that box of horrors. Although he tried to weather the bumps with phrenology, Eliotson's practice declined until he was vir virtually penniless, at which point Mr. Sterick approached him with an offer he couldn't refuse. Come anonymous faster after a conflict. I can get a read. I don't have enough money. I can get all I expect. <laughs> Richard Owen, 20th July, 1804. Sir Richard Owen never learned natural history in school growing up, which may have been his first mistake in life. He studied to become a surgeon at the University of Edinburgh, found work at the Hunterian Museum cataloging plant and animal specimens, and was elected to the research arm of the Zoological Society of London in 1830. He was the youngest and most active member of the group, by which I mean he did lots of work, not that he was a jogger. By the middle of the 19th century, scientists were theorizing about the presence of the divine in natural sciences. Owen threw his hat into the proverbial ring by publishing papers outlining his theory on the origin of Earth's species. In essence, Owen believed that the changes observed in animals occurred as a response to their environment, and that all species not only share a common archetypal ancestor, but that all species are progressing toward an idealized form, with humans already reaching their apex. From apes to apex. That'd make a nice title for my autobiography. Oh, and if that doesn't make a lot of sense to you, don't worry. Owen's contemporaries felt the same way. Owen developed a reputation for overreacting to criticism and responding in anger, crossing the line of acceptable behavior and discourse in the scientific community. This was evident more than ever in his scathing reviews of On the Origin of Species, published by Charles Darwin in 1858. Owen stood by his own theories even as his contemporaries came to embrace Darwin in natural selection. Feeling alienated from his peers in the field of biology, Owen focused his efforts on, among other things, establishing the Natural Mu History Museum, which he did in 1881. He was knighted three years later and promptly retired, which is what I would do when I finally, when finally the old bird knights me. By the time Owen passed away in 1892, he was remembered for little more than his op opposition to Darwinism and his misplaced ego. But before you go knocking him, keep in mind, Richard Owen coined the term dinosaur. Let's see you top that. Thanks, buddy. Nice one. Okay. Let's go. Medicine improves your health. Buy medicine from shops around London.
Boom. Having some trouble there, Charles? Jacko? How you doing, Jacko? Mr. Fry! I trust that you had a productive meeting with Mr. Owen. Oh, yes. We had a most wonderful chat. I found out the man behind Starrick's soothing syrup is John Elliotson. Dr. Elliotson. I haven't heard that name in a long while. He was a brilliant heart specialist until he became obsessed with phrenology and mesmerism. It ruined his career. Well, how shall we proceed? Oh, with all respect, Mr. Darwin, I believe I should proceed alone. After all, we wouldn't want to attract any unwanted attention. Sounds very wise. Good luck, my boy. Oh, and uh, Mr. Fry, should you find yourself with any free time, please do call on me. I like his beard. Okay, what do we got? Oh, do I, got I gotta actually go in. Okay. Where would I find the doctor? Where do you think you'd find the doctor? In the TARDIS. Would those even be available at this time? As you've just witnessed, the application of too much pressure can sometimes result in unexpected outcomes. Unfortunately, it appears I've ruined the organ. Send up a cadaver. At once, Dr. Lidson. I don't care about your ethics, and I care even less about your damn patience. Now hand over your keys. What are you doing? Haven't you heard? You're fired. Now bugger off. Why is there bloody hamstring all the way up? That's a good question. Okay, we got the nurse for an infiltration and the young doctor for a unique kill. Do it. Halt the electro convulsion therapy How session. Do not do fire it. a single bullet. Mm, I don't think so, nope. Unlocks all doors in the asylum. The doctor unlocks a unique kill. Take the place of the cadaver. I think. Yeah, 
That might be the Zappy Boys? I don't know. Unless there's another wood area. Wait. Those two might be the Zappy Boy. Yeah, I'm gonna get the nurse. Yeah, I'm gonna talk to the nurse. I'm trying to go around this hallway and... I'm just gonna knock you out. Well, these are doctors. They might not necessarily... This is the Industrial Revolution. Remember, they still use leeches. I'm in the wrong line of work. Sneak, 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 sneak. Oh, there's another guy. I'm gonna take you out first. I'm gonna get caught though. Sneaky, 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 sneaky. Is there anybody out there? Let me out of here! It's getting hot, it's hot, it's a breeze. What's up, boss? What's the matter? Oh, young man, help! I must speak with Miss Nightingale at once. One of the brutes stole my key, and there's no one around. I can't get out of here. Stole your key. Don't go anywhere. I might be able to do something. Oh, quite. Thank you, sir. Well, you'll know where to find me, sir. Go on now, sir. Oh, this is going to be Where could he hide? Well, I mean, he just didn't leave the body lying. Yeah. I mean, don't worry. Which way are you going? You're going up. Okay. Obviously, he got hit on the head by something. Where are you going, buddy? Oh, well. There's no junk to sell. Okay, time for electrocution, boy. I already got the key. I don't need to. She was fired. She doesn't have a job. Dr. Elliotson cannot be allowed to continue his experimentations. I must speak to Nurse Nightingale. She I can't unlock do. the door. His experimentations are making the patient worse. I am sure of it. You have my gratitude, sir. I shall inform Miss Nightingale that I'll not be working for this asylum ever again. Okay, 
or is electrocution by always? Where'd they go? There's my target. There they are. I can't get in here. Yep. Up, 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 up. No, Jacob. I'm just hunching over here. I loot them when I, I automatically loot them when I knock them out or kill them. Sorry guys. That's enough for a multi-kill. Thanks for your stuff, though. I did. I stopped it. He's okay now. Hide the body, sell the junk. He's in there. Jacob, can you move a little faster, please? He's behind the thing. Shh, this is my perfect hiding spot. Here it is, Doctor. We will continue our experiment shortly. In a moment, we will compare the brains of our two specimens. And since both specimens had a propensity towards violent behavior, we should see similar protrusions in specific parts of their brains. Corpses do not have boot. He said corpses don't wear boots. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Life's to dance. 
Yet I can only think of beginnings. A better tomorrow. Forged with the blood of visionaries. All I see is the blood of a lunatic. <laughs> you truly believe murdering an old man will stop humanity's great architect? Crawford Sterrick has a glorious design for mankind. Designs are meant to be broken. Oh, you're a child. A child who believes they can solve all the world's woes with a flick of a blade. Have you ever pondered the consequences of your actions, Jacob Fry? Or did your father teach you nothing? Oh, I was kidnapping him. I'm gonna loot you. Oh. Didn't realize that the doctors are dead. It's not the way out. Yeah, I was gonna say, I don't know if you work for the police or not. Five times there. I think he has brain damage. I think he's dead, Lucas. Oh. Thank you for the key. There's Jacob. Yeah, well, there are people here. Get Jacob. I should have just gone down the wall. <laughs> Out like nothing happened. That's a girl. One for the road. Ooh, I got a new 
Revolver. Steady on. Elliot's an expired, and soothing syrup production has ceased. Outrageous! Fry intends to endanger all of London at the hands of the mob. Or perhaps he doesn't intend much of anything at all. Thank but he's simply you. content to dice with our lives. The asylum is shut up. Medical care throughout the city is in disarray. He does not, cannot understand the consequences of his actions. The man is clearly an anarchist. Gentlemen. This tea was brought to me from India. By a ship. Then up from the harbor to a factory. Where it was packaged and ferried by carriage to my door. Unpacked in the larder and brought upstairs to me. All by men and women who work for me. Who are indebted to me. Crawford Starrick. For their jobs, the time, the very lives they lead. They will work in my factories and so too shall their children. And you come to me with talk of this Jacob Fry. This insignificant blemish who calls himself assassin. You disrespect the very city that works day and night so that we may drink this. This miracle, this tea. I'm nearing the end of my research. Our beloved London shall not suffer such a bothersome fool for much longer. And what of this sister I've heard of? Miss Fry. Miss Fry shall be gutted. Soon enough. Delicious. Delicious. Sorry to interrupt, Initiate. Thought you'd like to know that Sean and Rebecca got away from Otzelberg. Berg runs a unit called Sigma Team. Violet DaCosta is his tech support. They've been hunting and killing assassins for a long time. Thank God you're all right. Oh, tish tosh. It'll take more than a Templar super soldier to end the glorious saga of Sean Danger Hastings. I was talking to Rebecca. Right. Anyway, Berg's presence confirms it. The Peace of Eden is in London. The Initiate's data sync suggests it's the Shroud. The Templars seem to want it pretty bad all of a sudden. They must know something we don't. The only thing we know is that we can't go up against Sigma Team alone. Leave that to me. In the meantime, keep a low profile. Let the Initiate continue to sync the data. Sean Hastings. Well, Sean, good. On the next sequence. John Elliott Sem is dead, and Stag Soothing Syrup has been eradicated. Having shut down one branch of Stag's enterprise, Jacob looks to loosen the Master Templar's hold on London's transportation. Meanwhile, the race for the Shroud of Eden continues, and Evie hopes to gain the upper hand over her enemy, Lucy Thorne. Owning the railway wasn't enough. Now Starrick has bought an omnibus company as well. I suppose he wants to control the neighborhood's workers and keep them under his thumb. Pearl Attaway is Starrick's competitor, is she? Perhaps it's time I went into business. And Miss Fry, what are your plans? I studied the history we recovered from the Kenway Mansion's hidden room. I'm off to a certain monument. A certain monument. A room with a view, friendly competition, breaking news. Where are we right now? Oh, the lady with the lamp. I 
a little bit of advice. All right, we've got. I, you had a mission. The poor lady has a stalker, and he's just been ignoring her. I forgot it. Without her, your train would not function. It teleports me to some random place when I boot the game up, and I forgot. Okay. Here we got him. Malcolm Milner. 11th of August, 1833. Malcolm Milner was the oldest of five children born to a carpenter and a homemaker in Southwark. As the firstborn, his parents expected great things from him, and time after time, they were disappointed. While the siblings grew up to become bank clerks, crewmen, and teachers, Malcolm had a hard time grasping basic concepts. Glancing through our files, it looks like he may have been dyslexic. At any rate, the boy would lash out violently at school, and he left home when he was a teenager. Milner's name doesn't appear again until 1864, when public records show him acquiring the Greater London Omnibus Company and renaming it the Milner Company. How did he manage to buy a bus company? Perhaps he was skilled at driving backwards. Or perhaps I have it backwards, as this makes the beginning of, marks the beginning of a number of smaller bus companies dropping like flies due to fires and disappearances, the same methods Milner would use to sabotage out of transport. At this point, Parisian cab companies should be taken note. Anyway, it looks as though Steric Industries bought out Milner Company in 1867, around the time that Milner himself was being investigated for arson, assault, and murder. The investigation suddenly stopped that year as well. One of the benefits of working for Crawford Steric, no doubt. Yeah, skill point. Only one, though. How's the gang doing? Do you have money? Can you buy the pubs? I need like 6,000 for pubs. Having a hand in black market dealings that come with its own benefits. Buy new weapons and other gear from the inventory at a discount. Nimble, faster, more reliable fire trucks can reach the poorer bor boroughs of London. Get explosives. Popularity strikes. There are more Rook-themed carriages roaming around. Look for them on the streets of London. When you order your Rooks to fight, they will open conflict with a volley fire. Let's get more riders. Yes. Oh yeah. Hi, Evie. Those brass knuckles are a bit ostentatious, don't you think? Well, you said I do. Anything new with the souvenirs? Sometimes I find life in this city rather hectic. Dr. Elliotson's personal medical case. No longer will these tools be used for evil. I'm Dr. Elliotson came to a bad end. I do hope you cleaned up after yourself. I'm sure someone did. I've got something to tell you. I've been looking for you. Hi, Ned. I got like no money. You have 
having got tuppence. Okay, we're gonna end here, and I promise next time we'll do Agnes's mission. Just gotta remember to. I do so love the fog. It permits one all sorts of license. Looking a bit down at the heels. Got something to tell you? You'll have to wait for next time, Agnes. Well, till then, if you like this video, let me know in the comments. If you really liked it, press that cute little like button. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm Luke Dog, and I'll see you next time. No one ever gets on this train.